and that is the crossings must open. We gotta get the crossings open. The crossings have to open for two reasons. One is that when we open up the crossings, we can cut down on the traffic in the tunnels and therefore make sure that nothing goes through those tunnels that will endanger Israeli security or, by the way, Gaza security because some of these rockets misfire and land in Gaza, by the way. But also to address the desperate humanitarian conditions that we saw in Gaza. <coughs> We were only there for a day. We got there at about nine o'clock in the morning. We ended up having to leave at around four o'clock. But in the course of a day, we saw the industrial infrastructure bash to the ground. We saw the American International School, we have actually have a tape on that, bash to the ground. Brian Baird went, went, went digging, through, fishing through the rubble and pulled out uh, uh, the school uh, yearbook, which, uh, which showed, you know, a tremendous amount of hope <coughs> and promise that the young people had and, and the dedication of their of their teachers and the people who ran the school. Um, in, the all, in all the time that we were there, we talked with business people, we talked with young people, we talked with medical people, we talked with everybody. Each time Brian and I told them that we are American members of Congress and in no time that we received anger, hostility, and derision from anyone, we were actually treated with a tremendous amount of cordiality. In no time did we hear any anti-Israel comment. In fact, we heard from several ordinary citizens and business people, we want peace. We heard it from several people, and in fact, we never heard any pro Hamas comments either. Now, you might speculate on to why and whatever was going on, but I just want to let you know that in an area where a full 750,000 of the residents are under 18 years old, we have an opportunity to help heal uh, a very deep and divisive wound if we would dedicate ourselves to the cause of peace and do the hard work for it. You know, and I, and I want to wrap up my comments right now by saying this. I believe that it's, a, it's axiomatic that in a legislative body within the context of a democratic society, an issue for which there is no constituency to lobby, to write, to talk to policymakers, no matter how meritorious that issue may be, you will not find action. But where you have a, 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 a devoted constituency to lobby an issue, no matter how small that issue is or how frivolous it may be, you will see action. What's my point? In America today, you have a very strong, active group of people who are willing to lobby for Israeli security. You also have a smaller, less well-organized group that's willing to lobby for Pal the, the Palestinian side. But what, in my opinion, we lack is a constituency for peace. And we have to develop a constituency for peace. People who are willing to say, no, the United States cannot back away from the table. Yes, the United States has to be part of that solution. We are willing to lobby, write, talk to our legislators, offer legislation to make peace possible. This is a region of 300 million people, a region of 300 million people from Iraq all the way to the Maghreb. It's a beautiful place full of great people. The zero comes from here. Abraham comes from here. Jesus walked this area, and so did Muhammad. There's, there's no reason in the world why we cannot have a thriving, prosperous region of the world if we would confront conflict in a forthright and dogged and determined way. That's all I have to say. Thank you.